What up guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. By the way, we just hit 3,000 subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, giveaway will be announced at the end of this video. So today we're gonna be talking about the differences between an electric bike, electric moped, and an electric motorcycle. I'm not being paid by any of these companies to say anything about these bikes. However, I do have an affiliate link down in the description for each of these brands. If you're gonna pick up one of these bikes, you hit that link, saves you a couple bucks, and it helps out the channel quite a bit. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I think there's five main things that you need to think about when you're buying your next electric bike. Uh, where you want to ride, what you're gonna be riding on, the power level you want for your bike, how much power you want that bike to have, your skill level already on riding bikes, if it's a regular bicycle or if you've ridden electric bikes in the past, what look or style would you like for your bike to have? There's a bunch of different styles out there. All three of the ones I'm showing today are almost of a similar style. Uh, but there's cruiser bikes and there's all kinds of different ones. And the last but could be the most important is how much money you're willing to spend on said bike. So if you're going to have a certain budget or if you're going to pay for it over time. Um, so those are the five main things I think you need to think about uh, when you're going to buy your next bike. So guys, there's quite a big difference between a class two electric bicycle and a full blown electric motorcycle such as the Harley Davidson uh, live wire, which costs about $30,000. Um, the motorcycle or the motorcycle I'm comparing today is not that bike, but it's uh, as close as I have to um, an electric motorcycle. When you're making a purchase, uh, your budget is gonna have a big impact on what bike you are able to even get. Uh, we all know there's a lot of different bikes coming out in the five, uh, you know sub $5,000 category. Um, so just do your own research. I'm trying to give you my opinion. I've been around the industry for about two years. I have eight bikes, so I have some knowledge, but I think you need to do your own, dil do your own due diligence. And this is just my opinion, but this is exactly what I've come up with for me. So there's still a lot of gray area surrounding many of these bikes um, because from the onlooker's perspective, you, they can't really tell what class or uh, you know what e-bike you actually have. So a lot of times somebody will look at a bike that only goes 20 or 25 miles an hour and is a class two e-bike or in the class two range. And because it looks more like a motorcycle, uh, you get a dirty look. So it's kind of still in that, like people are figuring out what is what. I basically chose these particular ones because that's what I like for each category. Um, my fastest bike goes over 60 miles an hour and I don't have a license or registration for it at this point, um, even though I have the ability to do so. So that's something that I may do in the future. Said, this is the lineup that I chose for myself in these categories. For electric bicycle, I went with the Super 73 2018 OG. This bike is not the absolute original because there is a 2016 mid-drive version, which I do have, but it's not running so great at the moment. Um, so uh, once I get that running better, I will do a video on that. Uh, the price of this bike is $3,600. So it is not one of their cheaper bikes. In fact, it's not even produced anymore, um, but it is a classic and I love the style. I love the color and it just ro it rocks. It, it really runs great. The headlight looks cool and it's just a beast of a bike. Uh, for the electric moped, I went with the Spark Cycle Works Bandit and this is their dual battery version. And I do have another video about this bike specifically in my channel. Also where I changed out the shocks pretty proud of myself on that. Um, but this bike will run you um, $3,195. Like I said, if you're looking at any of these bikes, there is a link down below. It will save you guys a little bit of money. And then for the electric moped slash motorcycle category, I went with the Huck Cycle Stinger 3000. Now this is called the Stinger SX. Um, they don't make this exact version anymore. In fact, the one they make looks a little bit different. Uh, but this bike costs $7,200. So 
quite a big difference from the electric bicycle. This is more of the uh, high-end, more expensive bike. Two things I forgot to mention, both the Spark Cycle Works Bandit and the Huck Cycle Stinger uh, do come with a VIN number, and um, I do have uh, paperwork to get them registered. Um, so that they are ready to go um, if I was to want to register them and get lights and so breaking down each category a little bit more uh, For the electric bikes you can ride these in the bike lane on bike trails unless otherwise uh, specified in your area uh, This is your normal bicycle just with a motor and throttle that assists you when riding uh, Each state has specific laws dictating what the limits are for your bike So you might want to check into those uh, for your state uh, The electric moped is a bit more confusing to me at least in California, you don't hear a whole lot about electric mopeds and uh, the regulations surrounding them. Uh, from my research, if it's a true electric moped, you will need to carry an M1 or M2 motorcycle license and register with the DMV along with the plates for your bike. In California, moped registration is a one-time process with no renewal uh, required. So you get it done and then you're all set, you're ready to go, uh, there's no renewal uh, required. That said, California is one of the strict states. The majority of other states have laws that are quite different. In the majority of states, as long as your moped is within the 30 mile an hour speed limit, under 2 horsepower, and 1500 watt motor, has all the safety features like turn signals, VIN number, and how the Spark Bandit comes, that's all you need. No registration required. So look into the laws for your state. Electric motorcycles. Uh, once again, in California, it's defined as a motorcycle, and you will need an M1 motorcycle license, uh, proof of insurance, and a DOT-approved helmet. The Huck that I own was previously classified as a motor-driven cycle, like the Bandit, but new rules put it as a motorcycle. Um, so, yes, I should have it registered, and don't notice that I got this cool sticker uh, from Shreddy that it says it's a Class 2 bike, 750 watt, 20 miles an hour. Yes, you can ride it at 20 miles an hour, but once you go beyond the 28 miles an hour, you're really uh, pushing the boundary. Hey guys, so if you got to this part of the video, this is where I announced the giveaway. First place is gonna be a $100 Amazon gift card, second place is a $50 Amazon gift card, and third place is a $25 Amazon gift card. I'm gonna be uh, drawing the winner, or the winners, on December 26th, the day after Christmas. All you gotta do to enter is subscribe to the channel, like the video if you can, and then just comment down below uh, and then I'm just gonna pick three random comments first second and third So that's how you enter and good luck to you guys as you guys can see there's a lot of different laws and regulations at this point um, and they're constantly and continually changing and I'm sure they'll continue to get regulated because of all the situations that have been going on uh, That's something you want to think about when you're buying your next bike Do you want to buy something that you could get uh, taken away? I definitely do not um, also, the police are cracking down in states across the country on these electric bikes and so that's such a problem <laughs> that we're going to have and I'm sure it's just going to continue as uh, the bikes are more powerful and people who are unexperienced are riding them. Um, so we just have to, you know, kind of ro flow, roll with the flow. <laughs> so I used to ride gas powered motorcycles or dirt bikes um, back like right out to high school and stuff and basically after I had kids my wife said no more motorcycles. So I started with a Super 73 and I got her a Super 73 as well. Then I ended up wanting a little bit more and more power, so I got another Super 73 that had a little more power, went a little bit faster, um, was still classified as electric bicycle, and from there, I was able to weasel my way into getting a Huck Cycle Stinger, which is my electric motorcycle, but I can guarantee you that's about as close to a motorcycle as I'm gonna be allowed to have. So guys, in conclusion, um, my opinion is that you purchase the bike, one, for your skill level, and then two, uh, for your budget. And if you never rode an electric bike and you go out and buy like an Onyx or a Huck or a Suron, you put it in sport mode, twist the throttle, you could be putting yourself into a lot of danger because uh, those things have a lot of power and they can flip and they have flipped on people. So that's definitely one thing to think about. Also, you're gonna wanna know where you're gonna wanna ride. Um, it's not very easy to ride a Huck on like a bike trail or in the bike lane. People give you all kinds of dirty looks, but you could ride a Super 73 there, no problem. However, you probably would not want to ride a Super 73 uh, on a 45, 50 mile an hour road in traffic because you would not be able to keep up. So you really got to determine where you're riding. So once you determine uh, all of that, you can then determine what style uh, bike you want. A lot of these bikes can be modified, so you could buy it and then add to it, change the handlebars, change the different pedals, add a 10 speed kit, 
Some bikes come with almost everything you need right off the bat, or you can customize them on their website. So that's another pretty important thing you wanna look and see before you buy. Um, I hope this video has been somewhat helpful for you guys to uh, see what the differences are between the three different kinds of bikes. Uh, I have these bikes to show, but obviously there's a lot of other ones out there to compare and much higher end motorcycle uh, bikes available. One day I'll be getting a cake. <laughs> There's no plans yet, so I just can't wait. One day, that's like my dream bike at this point. Um, if you guys agree or disagree, uh, hit the like button. I appreciate that. It really helps the channel a lot. And um, if you do disagree, throw a comment down below on what you disagree about, and we can talk about it. If you guys haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing. It also really helps the channel out. Um, we just hit 3,000 subscribers, so like I said, I'm really excited. Uh, the growth of this channel has been more than I had ever imagined. Um, and with that, there's links down below for these bike companies. If you guys have any uh, desire to pick one up, use those links and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Any of you guys from the East Coast that are telling me I need to wear gloves when I'm riding, I've always said, yeah, yeah, no. As far as like safety wise, I understand. But when it comes to the cold, it's like 54 degrees, 53 degrees out here, and holy shit, dude, my hands are freaking numb. I can't even imagine how you guys do it when it must be like 40 degrees and below.